Oh, we serve an awesome God. He is accountable. He is dependable. Amen. I'm praying for a double portion of his anointing. Amen. We thank you today, oh God. We thank you for bringing us back into your house, oh God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know what you've been dealing with on today, but I need the Lord Jesus on tonight. And so, Lord, send your word, oh God. Send a word of encouragement, oh God. Take us to the next level, oh God. Higher heights and deeper depths, oh God. Save somebody, oh God. Bring the backslider home, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Bring our families together, oh God. Save our children, oh God. Give us joy unspeakable, oh God. Peace that surpasses all understanding, oh God. And we'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the praise when you do it for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Elders Daphne, I was just like you. If I could sing, I'd just be going crazy up here. Amen. I thank God for Pastor Mark. He said, uh, Pastor Paul, you just share the word. You can't sing, all right? <laughs> I know I love him, but he's telling the truth, amen. But sometimes the praise team, y'all sound so good, y'all make us think we know how to sing. Amen. <laughs> we thank God for the band and the praise team. Come on, let's give it up for them. Y'all do a wonderful job. And welcome to our on, online viewers. Continue to pray for Pastor and Lady in their absence. Pastor's out giving today, y'all, supporting another ministry leader. And uh, we're praying that he completes that assignment as an encouragement to that ministry. Amen. I hope all of y'all have come with great expectation. And my assignment today is just to continue to share some good news. Amen. Something that will help you. I don't want you to leave here just excited and stirred up, but something that you can apply to your life, amen, and benefit from it, amen, something you can share with somebody else that they might be blessed, amen, and so I pray that you hear it, you do it, you walk in it, and then you receive the benefits from it, amen. We're going to continue to talk about giving today, and I, I just want to dispel some myths. How many of you know what a myth is? An urban legend. Sometimes if you don't get in there and look at it for yourself, you, you might believe some things that people are telling you, amen. And I, I just found out that some things that I've heard in the church just ain't quite true, y'all. And, and so particularly our perception around giving, amen. And so uh, I, I want to make sure that we see giving the way God sees it, amen. And so I thank God uh, for Pastor Trice giving us the opportunity to do this. Come on, let's say our confession together. We're going to get right into the word. Hold up your Bibles. Let's say it together. In my hands today, I hold up the word of God. In it, there is direction, deliverance, healing, and joy. It will lift me up out of the darkness into the light. And in faith, I access its supernatural, miraculous, and power. And through it, I will live the abundant life. Amen. I received that, family. Come on, we're going right back to Acts 20 and 35. And it reads... I'm going to try to slow down a little bit tonight. I, I was told, you know, uh, you put a lot of scriptures up there on Sunday. Amen. People got them. You can go back and watch the video, but sometimes I, I have a, a tendency to just try to get all the information out. Amen. And so pray for me that I just slow down a little bit tonight. <laughs> Acts 20 and 35 says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, what? It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. We're continuing to talk about the more blessed way. And if you didn't uh, have an opportunity to be with us on Sunday, we just encourage you to go watch the video. Uh, we set some foundation on Sunday. We're going to continue to build upon that foundation we set on Sunday. And tonight, I believe I'm talking to the church. Y'all came out on Tuesday. Amen. Amen. And so there, I believe these are the mature saints. And so we're going to go a little bit deeper. Amen. And as I looked at that scripture, uh, Acts 20 and 35, I was asking God, uh, what is this labor that you called us to, God? And, and if you search the scripture, uh, he says that we're called to help the weak. We're called to help the weak, to give our concerns, our time, our money, our energy, our thoughts, our passions. As the church, as the body of Christ, we're called to help the weak. Amen. We, we call the tabernacle of David a refuge. 
Amen. We, we don't need uh, strong people to minister to. We need strong people to help minister. Amen. And any one of us can be the weak at any point. So we want to build ourselves up and understand that we're called uh, to help the weak. Who, who's the weak? The, those out in the community uh, that most people don't want to be around, people who are getting shot at, uh, the mothers who might be mourning because they lost uh, one of their, their, their sons, and so many much more things, amen, and we should all be concerned and ready to address these matters, amen. When we say give, it's not just in our money, it's, it's in everything that we are as the church, amen. Matthew 10 and 8 says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons, you received without paying, so give without pay. Amen. That is the labor that we're called to. Amen. God's going to give us our reward for, for what we do as a church. Romans 12 and 13 says that we are distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. And so Acts is saying that we're called to a labor. Amen. And when we do these things, we're going to be what? More blessed. That's the revelation I want y'all to get. We, we're gonna, we don't have to worry about uh, receiving because when we do God's will, uh, blessings are going to abound in our life. Amen. I, I looked at uh, this, this term more in the Greek, and it just says, in a greater t degree, better. You might be sitting there tonight and saying, I'm already blessed. Well, you should be blessed as a saint of God, but God's saying, I want you to be more blessed. I want you to be better blessed. Amen. I didn't wake up this morning and just said, God, I'm, I'm good. No, I want some more of you. Amen. Amen. And if you are good, somebody around you needs something. Amen. So you still need more to give to somebody else. Amen. When, when you look at blessed, it's the Greek word uh, markerios, I believe, and it's supremely blessed. You're fortunate. You're well off and you happy. I heard him praying today that, that we want to pray uh, for people who are oppressed or depressed. Amen. When God blesses you, you shouldn't be walking around being oppressed and depressed. Amen. We want to receive the full blessing of God. Amen. And so on Sunday, we talked about we actually have the power to determine what we receive. Amen. We, we have to walk in faith to receive it. There's, there's spiritual laws uh, that we can apply to our life and actually move the kingdom of God uh, on our behalf to do things supernaturally. Amen. I can't explain how it happens, why it happens. Amen. But it just happens. Amen. Y'all follow me? And so tonight we're going to continue that. We're going to talk more about the law of reciprocity. And it says when people receive something, they feel compelled to return the favor in kind. Genesis 8 and 22, I told you that uh, while the earth remained as seed time and harvest and cold and the heat and summer and winter and day and night, none of those things shall cease. And, and what God is saying uh, through this word is that there is a law of reciprocity in my kingdom. When you are born again, you become a what? Citizen of the kingdom of God. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. You are eligible to receive kingdom privileges. Is that true? That's, that's what the word says. We, we, are, we are born again, and we are born into a new kingdom. The church of God has been given access that others don't have when you're born again. How do I know that? Matthew 16 and 19, God told Peter, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. At, as a kingdom citizen, you have keys and access to do things on earth and in heaven. Amen? So, so in, the, in the Lord's prayer in Matthew 6 and 10, we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So, so, so we see what God's trying to do in the earth. Amen? And he wants us to be a part of it. And one of the definitions of the Greek word uh, to give in Acts 20 and 35, even as they were just praying about we need to have faith, is adventure. It is adventure. It is a verb, and I have to look it up. It's a verb that means you have to take a chance. When you're giving something uh, of yourself, you are basically taking a chance uh, that you're giving something away. And so Acts 20 and 35 can read 
in the latter part, it is more blessed to take a chance than to receive. To put something, especially your money or your life, at risk. But I'm trying to get you to understand that the kingdom of God, it, it really is no risk. Uh, you have to walk in faith, but if you believe in the word of God, um, you can bank on God's going to show up. You can count on God. Amen. That's what they were just singing. He's accountable. He's dependable. Amen. So the world might look like you're taking a risk, but when you walk with God, you know that he's going to show up every time. Amen. So our giving is an act of faith. You are really uh, taking a chance. You are really taking a chance, amen? But God is setting you up for the blessing because when you walk by faith, then you please God. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So you're taking a chance, but you write what God wants you to be taking that chance, amen? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God's potential, I believe, is only obtained by walking through faith. And that's why it's better to give than receive. You constantly taking chances by giving what God's given you, and you end up being more blessed. Amen? So uh, I can walk in that tonight because I know my potential is limited, y'all. I, I just said that God's potential uh, is achieved through faith, and God has no limits and no boundaries. So I don't want to walk in my potential. I want to walk in God's potential. So when I begin to walk by faith, and operate this word in my life, uh, my potential is expanded. I'm no, more, I'm no longer limited. I hear people say, I'm on a fixed income. You ever heard that? Fixed in yeah, yeah, your income is fixed, but God's income is not fixed. Why would you even speak, I'm, I'm on a fixed income? Right? That, that, that's speaking of your ability. But, but this, this faith walk, we're talking about leaning into God's ability. I've heard doctors uh, uh, call people into the office and say, we've done all we can do. You've done all you can do, but my God, he's just starting, amen? <laughs> Come on. And so that's, that's kingdom thinking to think I'm not basing what I'm trying to do on my ability, amen? I'm basing what I'm trying to do on what God's word says I can do, and I just need to tap into that thing. But you giving will lead to favor with God so that the supernatural can begin to occur in your life. And so don't limit God. Things begin to happen that you cannot explain. Amen. If you read 1 Kings 17, I don't have time today, but read that this week and see what happened to the widow woman when she took a chance and gave her last. Her act of giving and faith unlocked the overflow that she needed in her life. Amen. She thought she just had, uh, what is it, two morsels. Uh, she was going to eat it. Her son was going to eat it, and they were going to die. And that faith that she had just to give that away uh, to the man of God ended up being exactly what she needed to walk in the overflow. Amen. Because she was willing to give it. I told y'all Sunday, it's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. Amen. And so it might seem small to you, but God's looking at your faith. Are you willing to take a chance on me? You took a chance your way. Now you want to try me? I'm going to show up every time. It is the law of sowing and reaping. They say when you throw a penny up, it's got to come down every time. Amen. And so God's saying, if you trust me and, and take a chance on me, I'm going to show up every time. Amen. So watch who you allow to counsel you. Watch who you allow to counsel you. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says, we have to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I started out by saying, sometimes we just hear stuff, what we're singing, what people are saying, what we're saying, amen, and, and we need to begin to cast that down. It's, it's getting in our mind. It's, it's limiting our, our thinking about what God is capable of doing. And I, people, people on my team can allow me uh, to walk right out of faith. People will encourage you to stop giving. They will. And I guess, guess what? I bet you every time they tell you to stop giving, they broke. 
Test it out. Look, look at it. When you leave here, anybody telling you to stop giving, look at their life situation. Come back and tell me if I'm wrong. I, I don't think, I don't think got people who are prospering, because it's not according to the word, are, are stingy people. And then some of us go ahead and listen to them and stop giving. And we, we right in the broke line with them. Amen. <laughs> They say things like, that's a whole lot they asking for. When you hear that, just get on away from them, y'all. <laughs> Who you know done did that before? God done told you uh, he, he's going to respond to your faith. He's going to do something. And you got somebody on your team talking about, ain't nobody ever did that before. Well, I'm going to be the one to do it. Amen. I'm walking in faith. It's not according to my potential. It's according to my God's potential. Amen. Come on. They, they say, that's going to really be hard. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. 1 Corinthians 11 and 1 says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Amen. Watch who you're following. Watch who you're following. And you need to be telling these folks, I'm a child of the king. When they bring that nonsense to you. I have the keys to the kingdom. It's not about what I have. I need to tap into what God has. Amen. And he told me if I give, I'm going to be more blessed. That is my key to prosperity. Amen. Philippians 4.19 says, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. God never said you had to have everything. That's man's uh, uh uh, message to us in the world. When you look at the kingdom of God, there's only one king and he owns everything in the land. And so you have access to it. This world tells us that we have to accumulate things and then we get to use them. I, I told you this past week, what, I have access to a yacht that I don't even have to pay for. Think about that. Some people, they walk out, you get a new car and they're looking at your car and saying, wow, that's a great car. I'm like, do you want to pay the car note? They like the car, but they might not like the car note, amen? And so sometimes God's blessing says, I'm going to give you access to that, and you don't even have to pay for it. And I know all of us got some testimonies like that. If, you, if you're a giver, you got access to stuff that you didn't even pay for, amen? That's what he told the children of Israel. I'm going to take you into a land flowing with milk and honey uh, that you ain't even had nothing to do with, but you're going to have it, Amen? Just follow me. Come on. Guess who that scripture applies to? But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We quote that a lot. But when you read up a little higher, I'm going to walk through it really quickly. That, that scripture applies to givers. You just can't quote that scripture because you're a saint. Or you found it in the Bible, amen. Just read up a few. You can't quote that until you start giving. Your giving opens this scripture up for you. Go, go to Philippians 4 and 14. We're going to walk through that really quickly together. Let's read that. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. I think this is Paul talking to the Philippian church and said, you, you, you helped me out. I had an affliction. Uh, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but only you. You know how the saints look at you? They, they just pray for you, but they don't give you nothing. Amen. <clears throat> but this church gave something. Amen. That's, that's the tabernacle of David, y'all. 16th verse, for even in Thessalonica, yet sent... Uh, yet ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Y'all gave again. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that might abound in your account. You're going to be blessed because you helped me out. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Aphrodite the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And then he says, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Am I doing all right, Pastor Mark? 
Come on, come on. So, so the church sowed seed into Paul, and he represents the storehouse in this script. We, uh, Malachi says, bring, bring you the tithe into the storehouse. Amen. That, that is the church. That is the ministry that we might have what we need. And this church sowed. Amen. And because they sowed, Paul began to say that God's going to supply all of your needs according to your, his riches and glory. Amen. Paul wasn't going to give it back to him. He said God's going to give it to him. And so we're, we're stopping to share with you, family, uh, that God is just trying to push you into the more better. You have to make the choice. Amen. So when you do this, you please God and position yourself uh, to be blessed. Now, I started on Sunday by saying uh, that there are, are kingdom principles. Your giving requires the king to respond. Okay, the, the, God, God is I'm not present. He's all all places at all times. And when you begin to operate in his word uh, supernaturally, uh, he's got to respond. He's got to respond. You got to believe that. That, that that is the law of reciprocity. Amen. And, and then he said, depending on what you bring, I'm going to bring. I, I'm going to jump into if you weed when Queen uh, Sheba came to see Solomon, uh, she knew she was going to see the king. And she had to bring gifts, right? And, and when you read it, she didn't bring no mediocre gifts, y'all. She could have been thinking in her mind, I'm going to bring all this stuff. Solomon was already the richest man in the world. But she understood kingdom principle. She said, I'm going to bring my best to Solomon. And, and, and she gave it to him. And guess what? Guess what she left with? Seven times more than she brought to Solomon. Because Solomon said, you ain't going to take my glory. I'm the richest man in the world, amen? You ain't going to just walk up in here and show all my servants that you can give me something and I don't turn around and bless you even more, amen? That is the uh, spiritual law of reciprocity, amen? When you give to God, he is not going to give you back uh, less than you gave him. And he says, just try me. You got to try it. I'm just giving you the word. That's my prayer is that you would try it, that you would apply it to your life, that you wouldn't get weary in doing it. I mean, Pastor Mark uh, preached a message, I think, uh, uh, last year or the year before and said, what farmer uh, sows seed? Um, and you know you got to have a seed in the ground to get a harvest, but because it's taking a while for your harvest to come up, you just go back out and start pulling your seed up out the ground. The only way this will not work in your life is if you abort the process. You can abort the process. So you stop giving, there is no reaping. But reaping is still going on all around you for everybody who sows seed. The process doesn't stop, you just aborted your process. And, and so the next thing, when you give to royalty, you attract the riches of that royalty. When you give to royalty, you attract the riches of that royalty. You on their level now, amen? And, and you walking around trying to be stingy and whatever, but no, you better release everything you can in that space because they have the potential to launch you exponentially. You gain favor with that person, you might be doing something that you've never dreamed of the next week. The measure of reception is determined by the giver. That's why I said you have the power to determine what you will receive. That's the scripture. You sow so sparingly, you reap sparingly. Right? Right. That, that, that scripture right there. What you sow is what you reap. With the same measure you give, you will receive. And so we saw Queen Sheba came to Solomon and, and she ended up walking away uh, e even more blessed than she left. I even heard that uh, she came away with a baby. <laughs> I ain't going to go there, y'all, but it's the truth. Read the scripture. <laughs> 
And so, you know, we got all the, I said I came to dispel some myths. I, I've struggled with this myself because I, I didn't look at it. I just listened. And, and how we even speak about Jesus, you know, because the scripture says that he humbled himself and he made himself low. Nowhere in the scripture does it say that he was a bum or he was poor. But, but somehow in our mind, we believe humbling yourself makes you that. So how many rich, humble folks y'all know? Most, most millionaires I know, you would never know that they was a millionaire. They ain't walking around blinging like we blinging, you know. They, ain't, they don't got no reason to bling. They, they got the resources. And humble actually just means that you're submitting yourself to God's plan. Right? You, you're just submitting yourself. That, you want to be humble, amen, so, so that God can use it. I don't mean that you have to be poor. Amen. And, and when you think about um, what happened when, when Jesus uh, came on the earth, who came to give him gold? Kings. They bring gold and frankincense and myrrh to the newborn king. Uh, how, was he, how was he broke before he was born? They was bringing him all kind of resources. And the key is that he didn't have it. Men was given unto him. I don't know which of these uh, values is true, but when I studied it, it said that what they brought Jesus at his birth was estimated to be more than 40 to 100 million dollars. 40 to 120 million dollars. That's what they gave his parents before he was even born, at, at his birth. Come on, y'all. So, so why do we think Christ was so forth. Philippians 2 and 8 says he humbled himself to be obedient to death, even death on the cross. That just means to me that our God became a man. He lowered himself to complete his assignment in the earth. And that does not mean he still didn't have all power in his hands. It doesn't mean that he didn't have resources. In fact, to do the ministry that Jesus was doing, when you just read how he was moving throughout the land, he had to have resources, y'all. All his needs were taken care of. All of them. Right. You, Pastor Trice say all the time, we can't pay bills supernaturally, y'all. You got to come up with some means of currency to pay bills in this earth. And so Jesus had some resources. And, and so my prayer is that as we listen to this, uh, we would walk in a new revelation and application of this word around giving. You all get the poverty mentality out of your mind. It, it's a word that has the potential to break our generational poverty, our lack, just by applying this word. And that we gain a better understanding of God's way and his original intention for his creation. Amen. Joshua 1 and 8. If you read that it says. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written. For then who's going to make your way prosperous. Put that scripture up there. Joshua 1 and 8. <clears throat> this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. This scripture is saying that, that you need to observe it and then you can make your way prosperous. You have the power. I receive to hear anybody uh, associate me with a statistic about what's going to happen in my life. I just know too much of the word now. I, I, I can't even receive that. Where I came from, what my demographic is, where I live at now, none of that matters because I have the power to determine what's going to happen in my life. So if you was born on that side of the track or, or maybe you, you had some traumatic event and all that, don't worry about that. Amen. You got the power to make a difference in your life. So get this word and apply it that you might make your way prosperous. The only way this scripture does not come to pass is if what? I told you, you abort the process. Pastor was preaching last week, don't get weary in well-doing. 
How do you abort the process? You get weary and well-doing and you faint. And the Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. And so, so when we get weary, we just got to get, get our priorities back in order, y'all. We, we got to find Jesus in every situation. You know, if you stop sowing seed, you're going to stop reaping. So that's not the solution. Don't draw away from God when you get weary. You need to draw closer to him when you get weary. Amen. God's word is not going to stop working. Amen. You just don't sow and therefore you don't reap. And so this principle is seed time and harvest. They both have to continue to work. So Galatians 6 and 9 says, and let us not be weary in well doing. For what? In due season. In due season, we shall reap if we faint not. And all of our seasons are different. But it's coming. There's a season. I think somebody preached that. There is something called due season. And that scripture said that, but your season is coming. If you sow, you are going to reap. There is a reaping season. I think Pastor Mark preached it. We are coming to the reaping season. Amen. Amen. I talk to uh, Deacon, Deacon uh, Hannah in the back all the time. Sometimes people get, I'm just getting into the stock market, y'all. He's been doing it for years, and I, I've been had to stretch my faith out there. And uh, he said, most people get fearful when the stock market goes down. They start, stop investing because of their fear. When, when folks who actually participate in it know that's when you really need to get in it. Right? N naturally. And so in, in the spirit, what, what God is saying is when, when you don't have nothing, that's, you, you really need to be connecting to me now, right? When... when uh, uh, Pastor Lynette said that, you know, she was ministering Sunday and said, I, I was going through or whatever. We got to draw closer to God so that he can strengthen us. Amen. That is what the ministry is for. That's what we said when we started out tonight. We are here to support each and every one of us that are weak. Amen. That's how we give. That's how we impart. That's how we advance God's kingdom. Amen. And so the Bible tells me if I don't faint, if I stay steadfast, I'm going to reap. So the enemy's strategy is to do anything that he can to distract me, to distract you, to get us to doubt, to stop reading the word, to stop op operating in our flesh instead of walking by faith. That is his tactic. And in every one of these challenges, I have to fight to find Jesus in the situation. That's why we say Romans 8 and 29. And we know all things are working together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All of this is working together for my good. I can't see it. I don't understand it, but I'm not going to abort the process, God. I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep giving. I'm going to keep coming because I know my due season is coming. Amen. If I keep pressing, my harvest is coming. If you're in the night, I told you the day is coming. If you're cold, just wait. It's going to get hot around here. If it's the summer, just wait. The winter is coming. Amen. If you keep giving, the blessing is coming. It has to. So it is better to give than to receive because your sowing creates the harvest that you're going to receive. It creates your increase and not just money, but whatever you sow. Not just money, whatever you sow. If you sow love to folks, you're going to reap a whole bunch of love. Amen. You sow dinners to folks, people are going to start feeding you. Amen. Come on. What you need, sow it. I'm almost done, y'all. Before I do that, I'm going to talk about tithing, though. Just to be clear, and and I'm tithe. Tithe is T I T H E. Tithes, T I T H E. Amen. Pastor Mark and I got an inside joke. Amen. We're tithing. I'm gonna do a demonstration, and I'll be done for tonight. So Malachi three and ten says, "Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts." If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Is that what it says? And so I, I was saying, God, what is the blessing? Well, the Hebrew word is, is baraka, and it means uh, prosperity, a present, a gift. It even means a treaty of peace, that, that things just might be well for you, that that. If, if things were breaking off in your life and, and all types of trauma and, and commotion and all that, it says that he will bring peace 
into your life. So if, if hell's going on in your life, you give, y'all. And now comes the treaty of peace. And then Malachi 3 and 11 says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, which, which confirms the blessing not only gives you, but then it protects you. Amen. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And Malachi 3 and 12 says, and all nations shall call you blessed. So now you know what the blessing is. And everywhere you go, they're going to say you blessed. I showed you on Sunday, you're just walking around and things are just coming to you. It's working out. That's what Malachi 3 and 10 through 12 is saying when you bring the tithe into the storehouse. Amen. For ye shall be a delightful, delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Why? Simply because you're a tither. So should you tithe? Yes, you should tithe. Tithing is just 10% of whatever God increased you to have. 10%. And we don't have time to get into this tonight. I just told you that God owns everything. So, so we kind of say that we owe God 10%. Everything he gave us is his. I mean, when you study it, he owns everything. So really, if he, if he gave us the 90, he's lending the 90 to us. I just want the 10. You're going to walk by faith so you can give me the 10 because you're walking in faith. You're pleasing me, and then I can take that 10 and multiply it and give it back to you. That's sowing and reaping. Or you can keep the 100, and now it says, well, a man robbed God. In the now you're robbing God, and then you've aborted the process. It's that simple. You got a formula right there. I own everything. Here's the rule. Uh, make the 100%. Give me 10. Uh, you're walking in faith. I'm going to bless you, and let's just keep doing it over and over and over again. So if you do that, you teach your children that, your children's children, y'all going to be blessed. <clears throat> do I have any uh, witnesses in the house? <clears throat> I'm not just up here. To, yeah, I knew I was talking to the church tonight, so y'all move on, Pastor Paul. We're doing it already. Well, go tell somebody else. Encourage somebody else. And then we got a challenge to give more so that he can bless us more. Amen? We can always stretch our faith. Now, people say that tithing is an address in the New Testament. There's probably one or two of y'all in here who's thinking that right now. But I believe it is addressed by Jesus himself. It isn't just introduced as a law, a new law in the New Testament, because we're no longer under the law, but it is addressed. And go to Matthew 23 and 23. Jesus addressed the tithing question, and not only did he address it, he said the tithing wasn't even a weighty matter. It's a minor thing. It's a trivial thing that we as the saints of God should have already received and applied to our life. Come on, read, read this scripture. It says, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint. Jesus was speaking to him and said, I know y'all paying tithes. Why did he have to come back and reinstitute tithe? It was already out there and said. But he's commenting on it right here. And then he says, and Anis and Cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. He said, oh, you, you doing that, but you're not doing these other weightier things. Jesus addressed this and says, this ain't even a big issue. Just pay your tithes. You're going to be blessed. Now we can move on to something else. We got salvation down. We got giving down. Now Jesus said we can get to the weightier things. <laughs> Them two things right there is easy. <clears throat> Matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. We got to deal with the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Weightier means it's burdensome, grave, grievous, heavy, severe. That's the New Testament, y'all. So hopefully, some of y'all who are still struggling on, should we pay tithes or not, there you go. Grab Pastor Mark after service if you need a, a deeper explanation. Amen. Get this family. Get this family. Now I'm going to make one, one uh, point about the tithe, too. Anybody here got a wallet with some money in it? I need a wallet with some money, about 100 bucks. I need your wallet and your money. Wallet. I don't want yours, honey. I already got your wallet. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pastor Mark got some money in here. 
Can I, can I tell him how much you got, Pastor Mark? Let me see. He got, he got a few hundred in here at least, y'all. So I'm going to sit this right up here. And uh, this is a nice wallet, Pastor Mark. Got some good money in it. Honey, I think we can go on a vacation now. Amen. And uh, now what would y'all say if I just finished this message, said I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and just walked out this church without, with Pastor Mark's wallet and didn't even give it back to him? What would y'all say about me? I'm a thief. What else would y'all call me? I'm crooked. I'm a hypocrite. Amen. Why would y'all call me that? It don't belong to me. Well, well, Jesus didn't say that in the New Testament that I didn't, I couldn't steal. Did he say that in the New Testament that I should not steal? I'm under grace. I should be able to take this wallet and walk right on up out of here. Amen. Shouldn't I? Yeah, I see some of y'all questioning that, right? Well, well, that's what we do with the tithing conversation, right? We kind of say Jesus didn't show up and tell us that we had to tithe, so we don't have to tithe. Well, well, he didn't show up and say we didn't have to steal or kill. We, We know not to steal or kill. And so that, that's a trick of the enemy to get in our mind to get us to do something to walk away from our blessing. Amen. We know that the wages of sin is death. I don't need Jesus to show up and tell me no more. Amen. I done already did it. I told y'all Sunday, I ain't going back that direction. Amen. And so with our tithing, it's, it's the same thing. I know what the wages of tithing and giving is. The wages of giving is what? More blessed. (laughs) The wages of giving is more blessed. Every time you do it, the wages of giving is more blessed. I think y'all got it. I think y'all got it. And so I'm almost done. If if you don't have it today, family, it's probably just because you, you haven't planted it. All right? So get that. If you don't have it, you haven't sold it. And if you planted it and don't have it, you just probably haven't been a good steward of it. That's really the two things I I would challenge you to think about as you leave tonight. It's not that God didn't bless you. You didn't give or you gave sparingly or he blessed you and you squandered it. That's what I've done. Because God's word has to be true. But guess what? I got got good news for you. We have an opportunity to get it right today. All we have to do is repent and get it right with God. And the Bible says that he pities his people and answers his people and sends us what we need to be satisfied. Joel 2, 18 and 19 says that. He he will pity us, he's going to answer us, and then he will send us what we need to be satisfied, amen. And, and he goes on to say in Joel 2 and 25, and I, restore, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, 26 verse, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. There is a more blessed way, amen. I'm going to stop here. I still had about five more pages, but the Holy Ghost said they got it. <clears throat> they got it. Come on, let's give God a hand praise. All you have to do is walk out of here and tell God to give you the faith to walk. You have the faith, but to operate in the faith to walk in that word. Amen. And, and we'll be a church of testimonies. We'll be a church of of, of, of great exploits, will do great things in the community. You're going to be blessed. Your family's going to be blessed. And that's really what we wanted to get across to you. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father God, we thank you uh, for this time, oh God, this season, oh God, that we might receive a word on giving, oh God. I pray that we're leaving uh, this week with a different revelation, a different understanding, uh, uh, w- that we would walk in wisdom, oh God, and Apply what we now know, O God, in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, I pray that uh, when doubt shows up, when, when fear shows up, that you would recall these scriptures, oh God, and that we would continue uh, to apply this in our life, that we won't abort the plan that you have for us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray when your people do that, that you would bless them, oh God, beyond their their wildest imaginations, oh God, that you would exceed their expectations, oh God, that they would uh, experience newness of life, oh God, that they would walk in the Zoe life, oh God, that you've called them to walk in, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that we would never see giving as a bad thing anymore in our life, oh God. And we declare and decree that it is so. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. If there's one here that would like to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I'm going to ask that you uh, look at this scripture, Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you've never pray the sinner's prayer you can do that tonight and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior all you have to say is that I believe that Jesus died <clears throat> went to hell rose again for me on the third day and is now seated at the right hand of the father I believe it uh, with my heart and I confess it with my mouth amen if you said that you are now saved amen become a part of a family a, a local church amen and and follow uh, the word of the Lord. Follow uh, the local pastor. Amen. If you walked away from God, you can pray the prayer of rededication. Amen. First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you walked away from God, walked away from his blessings today, you can just repent. And say, Father, forgive me. And he'll take you right back until his fold. If you prayed that prayer, uh, you've repented. Amen. And then if you do not have uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost, we encourage you uh, to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 and 4 says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. You need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. When we walk out of this church today, we're going to be challenged again. Amen. And we need to build up our spirit, man. We need a boldness, amen. We need to know, uh, we don't always know what to pray for, but the Holy Ghost does, amen. He's a keeper. Hallelujah. He'll keep us uh, through the week. He'll keep us through the tough times, amen. And so if you've not received the Holy Ghost, we pray that you receive it right now with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Speak the name of the Lord in, the, in, in your tongues, amen, in the name of Jesus. We thank God for this service. Come on, let's give him a hand, praise. <clears throat> It's pa oh, there's Pastor Mark. Pastor Mark's coming. He's going to receive the offering and dismiss us on this evening. God bless your family. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Paul, and thank you once again for saying yes to your assignment, which you indeed fu did fulfill. Listen, it's time to, it, it, there's just no better time to receive the tithe and the offering than this moment right here. Um, if you need to, an envelope, just raise your hand. There's one right here. Raise your hand if you're out there um, in our uh, virtual audience. Please don't pass up this opportunity to give because God has something special for you in this season. This is a word in season. I know in my life, this is a word in season. You responded really well Sunday in your giving. And the word of God is true. The Bible says God cannot lie. It goes on to say it is impossible possible for God to lie he just he's incapable of it and so when he makes his promise in regard to sowing and reaping let your soul leap upon that and get something that is a sacrifice get something that costs David said I'm not going to give God something that cost me nothing let it cost you something and God is faithful and true to your word, his word. And there's several ways, obviously, you can give here. Tabernacle of David's Cure Give, Text Give app, TODC.org, press donate, dollar sign, TOD Experience. You can also mail it to 2645 West Holmes Road, Lansing, Michigan, 48911, or drop it off at the same address. But get those seeds and raise them up right there where you are. Raise your device, whatever it is you have. Father, thank you so much for... Uh, your provision to us thus far. Our future is in your hands, so we put these resources in your hands. 
and we trust them in your hands more so than we do in ours. That's why we're giving it to you, looking for you to do what you said that you would and give us all things that we need, all things that pertain to life and godliness, um, that we'd always have all sufficiency and all things that bound to every good work. Um, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Or windows of heaven open up, pour out a blessing. God, all the things you said throughout the scripture that you would do for those who trusted you, we surrender to you tonight, Father, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may bring your uh, tithes and offering. Right now, let me drop mine here too. Thank you, sir. So you can stand to your feet. Just a couple of things. Um, We are quite excited that this Saturday we're going to have our first evangelistic, our first corporate evangelistic event. We're going to be a part of the Juneteenth March. We need you to be at Sexton. Who, who, do, who is the you that we need to be? Everybody that hears my voice right now and anybody else you can tell. We need you to be at Sexton High School at 10 a.m. on Saturday. The, the, the parade begins at 11, so we need to assemble and get everybody lined up to be there at 10 a.m. And let's show the community that we're coming to you. We can't just ask people to come to church, y'all. We, we, got, we got two days out of the week that we ask them for a few hours to come to us. Then we got all the rest of the week where we have an opportunity to go to them and show them that we're willing to step outside of our walls and be where they are. This is that opportunity to show the community the Tabernacle of David indeed cares. We're going to have things to pass out. We're going to have a banner. We're going to have a, 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 a car up front. And we're going to be doing the things the Tabernacle does. Now, if you don't have a T-shirt, we want you to wear a Tabernacle T-shirt or some other kind of representation of Tabernacle of David. If you don't have that, then we ask you to wear something uh, colorful uh, that doesn't carry some other kind of message. But... If you don't have a t-shirt and you're here in the building, uh, right outside on the table, there are Tabernacle of David t-shirts that we are giving away. And I see somebody about to run out of the sanctuary right now and go get one. <laughs> but they're right outside the table. And if they're not gone by tonight, we'll take them down to the, the, the office. Just call the office, see if there's any left. But there's no excuse, y'all. There's t-shirts right out there that say Tabernacle of David. Please, 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 please. Let's come together this Saturday, meet at 10 o'clock at Sexton, and let's show this community that we're here to love, that God is love, and love lives here. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you so much for this moment in your presence. Thank you for the word that you delivered to us and the impartation. We're going to testify of this season and this moment and your future blessings as they are poured out to us by your generous hand. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And God bless you all.